Hi, I'm Amy Schmidt with Dinnerboard, and today I'm going to show you my tips and techniques for making pizza at home. We love pizza here, we eat it all the time, and having two teenagers, uh, I have found over the years that it's been easier for me to make the pizza than to call for it. I've gotten some things down to speed up the process and I want to share those with you. First of all is store-bought dough. I always have some on hand in the freezer. Um, I get mine from a local grocery store. If you live in New England, Market Basket has my favorite dough, which is this red and white bag. It's 18.5 ounces, which gives me a large pizza. Um, but other grocery store chains have great pizza dough as well. I like Trader Joe's, I like Whole Foods as well. So um, you can definitely find great pizza dough at your grocery store. So we have friends over often, I make pizza for them, it's fun, it's interactive, and everyone's always wondering how the pizza comes out so well. So I had a few friends ask me to show them how to do it, so I thought I'd show you how I do it. So first of all is the peel. This is a wooden peel you see at a pizza parlor. And the other thing that I have is a pizza stone that is in my oven, and it's been in there for about 45 minutes on the highest temperature it will go, which is 550. Um, if you don't have that time, I think getting it in there even for 15 minutes will be helpful, but the longer the stone is in there, the faster that crust will cook on the bottom when you put it in and the faster your pizza will cook. So here is the trick. First of all, peel. Then you have your flour. You just wanna flour the peel. I actually stretch the dough right on the peel. I have some friends that will do it on like a cookie sheet. The cookie sheet's fine, it's just gonna burn in the oven because the oven's so hot. So ideally, you really wanna use a pizza stone, especially if you like thin crust. The tip that I tell everybody when they start to do this is to not knead the dough when it comes out of the bag. You basically dump it onto your, stone, your peel, make sure it's floured, and then you wanna flour the dough a little bit, and that's it. Um, you don't want to push it back together. You don't want to knead it like bread. What it will do is it will put all those glutens back together and they'll lock up. Um, this is nice and loose. It's easy to work with. If you like your pizza a little more bubbly, I would keep it out on the counter um, and it will get warm and rise a little bit and that will give you some nice bubbles. I like ours kind of in between. Some bubbles, some crispness. Um, if you don't want any bubbles, I would say do your dough when it's a little cooler. Start stretching it when it's a little cooler. So all you do is you just kind of rotate it in a circle. It's kind of like, again, being at a pizza parlor and moving it around. And you'll feel it starting to get a little sticky. You can actually see some of the bubbles on this because this one's been out for a while. Um, and you really can't put too much flour on it. Again, if you start kneading it, it's gonna get really difficult to work with and it will be almost impossible to stretch only like a rolling pin. Some strong muscles and maybe an hour of work to get this on the peel. Um, but I just, you know, keep on moving it around and stretching it. It's not going to be a perfect circle, and that's okay, because what I'm going to do is stretch it over the peel um, and have kind of the sides hold down the edges of the dough. So that's about the size that I see this going on this peel. The peel is, I think, a 15 and a half by 17 and a half, 18 inch peel. It's a, it's a large one, there's other sizes as well, but. I make pizza a lot, and so this one will give me eight slices if I stretch it all across. And as you can see, I just kind of draped it across, made sure, and you wanna make sure again that there's enough flour underneath because you want it to slide off onto your pizza stone. If not, it will stick. And it's not the end of the world if it sticks, but if it does stick, um, I can tell you how to fix that in a minute. Um, so we stretch the dough on and you can see it just kind of fits and I just you'll see I just kind of roll it under and have the peel hold it in place and so that's it the main trick is do not knead the dough when it comes out of the bag flour it and stretch it and again it doesn't have to be a perfect circle it just needs to be enough to cover your peel so with this I'm gonna go ahead and make a pizza and I just grab stuff out of the fridge so I always start with a little olive oil on the bottom. This is when it gets a little messy because I use my fingers a lot. Um, and I'll just kind of put this olive oil all over the dough. Get all the sides and the corners rubbed in and the crust as well. 
my family's not big on sauce, so I usually use different things instead of sauce. Um, I made pesto the other day, so I'm gonna use a little pesto uh, that I made, and just basically it's basil, uh, Parmesan cheese, and garlic, and olive oil. My son's allergic to um, nuts, so I try to not use pesto that has any nuts in it, and it was just easier for me to make it. So um, I just blitzed it together in the blender. So this is just a little pesto that I made really garlicky smelling um, and delicious. So we'll put that on here, a little bit more on. And then, you know, if you like sauce, you can put sauce on it. I've done a lot of pizzas with uh, ricotta and mozzarella and, um, you know, a garlic and an onion. So that's another kind of basic pizza you can put together. Next, I have uh, some smoked mozzarella that we had hanging out. We'll just kind of sprinkle that on. This nice it. This goes nicely with the um, pesto on here, and then just for a little more veggie and color, I'm gonna put on. Layer the tomatoes on. Make a little pattern here. Probably could have used a little tomato, but a little more tomato. So we'll have that in there. And then that's it. The pizza is done. So quick, so easy to put together. So Next, what I'm going to do is loosen the edges. Make sure all the edges of the dough were up. And here's the moment of truth. I'm going to give it a little shimmy shake and see if it moves. My fingers are crossed that it will move. And it does. You can see it kind of moving on the peel here. So that means it's going to slide pretty easily. If it does not slide at all, what you're going to want to do is take your crust, roll it forward, flour, back, Roll the other side, flour, put it back, and just rearrange the toppings. It happens often. A lot of times I'll get to talking with my husband and the pizza dough starts sticking and it absorbs the flour underneath and I have to kind of get this going again with some flour on the bottom. So with that, I am gonna give it one more shimmy shake to make sure that it's moving. This corner's a little stuck now. And we're gonna put it into the 550 degree oven. You can see my pizza stone is in there. Oops, it's a little smoky. And we're just going to put it in and set the timer for eight minutes. So eight minutes is up and I'm going to take the pizza out. I'll show you what it looks like. So just as it went in, it goes back on the peel. Pull it right back out. And here it is. Depending on your oven temperature, you might want to leave it in a minute or two longer and depending on how dark you like your crust, this one seems just perfect for us. I hope you really enjoyed these tips and I hope that you try making pizza at home too. Enjoy.